Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Marinela and I'm creating Photoshop related videos. So if you are interested in this kind of stuff, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified every time when I upload. Today I'm going to show you how you can create iOS 14 aesthetic using Photoshop. And without wasting any more time, let's get started with the tutorial. The first step is to select what kind of colors, what kind of icons you would like to use in your aesthetic iOS 14. To make it easy for me, I created a color palette that I was using for all the icons and uh, text and uh, pictures and everything that I was using for my iOS 14 aesthetic. I selected kind of rushed rose colors, but you can choose any colors you like and you can make it as colorful as you want. For my aesthetic, I decided to use the original app icons for most of the apps and for some of them I decided to make more personalized uh, icons, so I'm going to show you both ways. First I started with the Facebook logo, which is one of the easiest ones to do, as it contains only two colors, blue and white, and I decided to keep the white and change the blue with pink. With the magic wand tool, I created selection of the blue color of the Facebook logo and I created a gradient on the selection using light pink and darker pink. When I was happy with the result, I made sure to save it as PNG file with the interlacing option selected, which keeps all the space around the icon empty and uh, it will still be empty when I upload it in my telephone. The next icon that I started was the Coast icon, which was a little bit harder because it contains three types of greens. So what I did was again with the magic wand tool, I selected the first type of green that was on the icon and then holding shift button on the keyboard, you can add to the selection. So I did that for all the type of greens on this logo. When I had the all green selected, I created another gradient with different types of pink. I saved the icon in PNG format with the interlacing option on. I am not going to show you in details how I changed the messages icon because the process was basically the same as the process for the calls icon. And here comes the hardest icon that I changed, it is the Instagram icon. As it contains many colors, it was easier for me to select the white of the icon. Then I went to the menu, select, inverse, and this inverted my selection, so everything except the white was selected. You can see that this way the selection includes the empty space as well and the way I fixed it is with the magic wand tool selected and holding out on the keyboard you can easily remove part of the selection so I removed the empty space. The next icon was Spotify. On the place of the black colors I wanted to put a little bit darker pink and instead of the green I put it a lighter pink. So again with the magic wand tool I selected the black and holding shift button I added to the selection all the parts of black that was missing from the first selection. Then I changed the color with the, darkest, the darker pink that I wanted and And then I inversed the selection and did the pink. The inverse selection, as you remember, was from the menu Select Inverse. That was the easiest way that I could come up. But don't forget 
to delete the uh, outside empty space around your icon from the selection before you change the cover with the cover that you want to use. Just a reminder, the way to remove the back of the icon is when you're using the magic wand tool to hold the button out and then you will deselect from the selection. And that were all the icons that I wanted to keep original. The rest I fixed myself. For my middle size icon, I decided to make a little reminder to myself to smile more. I created a file with sizes 800 pixels to 400 pixels and with the rectangle tool I created a shape. I decided to make a little border, you can do that through the menu layer, layer style, stroke and then for the design of this icon I created a new layer and made it a clipping mask to the rectangle layer. Right click on the new layer and then create clipping mask. And then I started using all kinds of brushes that I had in my Photoshop uh, until I was happy with the result. I was changing, mixing and so on. So you feel free to do that. And this is kind of the cool thing about Photoshop that you can try and edit until you're happy with the result. I always have a hard time selecting a font for my text every time, so it took me a lot of time until I was happy with the result. Please let me know in the comments if you have the same problem or is it just me. Eventually I was happy with the final result and I saved it again PNG with the interlacing option selected. And next I created a small sized icon, the process was the same as the medium sized icon, the only difference is that I made it a square shape and then I have no idea why I did it this way but I created the background cover on a separate clipping mask layer and on another clipping mask layer I was putting all of the brushes and stuff that I, I was using. But you can totally just cover the uh, shape in the cover that you want and skip the first clipping mask layer with the background cover. I created a few small sized icons just so I have options when I was designing my iOS 14 aesthetic. I saved all of them in PNG format and I was ready to proceed with the telephone. For this tutorial I was inspired by one of my favorite YouTubers, Renee Amberg. If you are interested in lifestyle vloggers, definitely check her out, her channel will be linked below. She did a video on her iOS 14 aesthetic using the same apps but using icons that she found on internet. So I decided to do mine totally my style using Photoshop for the icons and all the buttons. I used two apps that Rene recommended, Widget Smith and Shortcuts. First I started with the icons for my favorite apps using the app Shortcuts. When you open the app you need to click on the plus sign on the upper right corner and you will get a window for creating an action. I personally created only open app 
actions, but you can definitely check the other options as well. So you need to type open app in the field and then you get to choose which app you want to open by the shortcut. Choose the app and proceed with the three little dots on the upper right corner. Then select the option Add to Home Screen. After that you need to select a name for the shortcut and an icon. Then just click on the button Done and you'll get the icon on the home screen. You need to do the same for every shortcut that you want on your home screen. The other app that I used to create my aesthetic is Widgetsmith. iOS 14 has a lot of widget options itself, but using this app you can get much more creative and get the exact result that you want. The way to work with this app is you first need to open the app, then you get three widget size options, small, medium and large. I stick to the small and medium size because the large is too large for my liking. So you first pick up the size, I will do a widget with medium size. You will see that you have many different options for widget, calendars, time, steps, weather, pictures and many more. I picked a calendar widget option. You can change the style, the font, the color of the font, the color of the background. You can also pick customized color for both the text and the background. When you're happy with the result, save the widget and get back to the home screen. On the home screen you need to hold your finger for a second and you'll see a plus button in the upper right corner. Click on the button and find in the list the app Widgetsmith. Choose the size that matches the size of the pre-done in Widgetsmith widget that you want to add. Then click OK. You'll get an empty widget with the selected size on the home screen. Now you need to select the widget itself. Hold on your finger on the widget smith space and click edit widget. Then find the name of the widget you created and click OK. You will have to do the same for every widget that you want to have on the home screen and then arrange everything as you wish. I personally used the calendar widget and two photo widgets. It honestly did take me a while until I finished my home screen look, but I actually really liked the final result. I hope you do too. Let me know in the comments below if you tried. It will also be very nice for me to see your final results in the comment section, so feel free to share them. And the rest is just creating more shortcuts and more widgets and arranging them on the home screen. And that will conclude today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new. If you like the video, share it with friends so they can also edit their iOS home screens and subscribe for more videos from me. You will also find a link to our Facebook group so you can join us. We are over a 130,000 people in the group sharing the same interest in photoshop and all kind of adobe products so if you're interested in that you're more than welcome to join us